Sometimes you get more than you expected. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Now I had initially not planned to do a full length video on this. I was gonna do a short after I got it and just call it a day. But after using it a little bit, I absolutely had to do a long form video on it. You can kind of get a size comparison between the battery and the Baofeng UV5R. So it uh, is a fairly large battery bank as far as small little portable battery banks go, but it's got a lot of cool features. Uh, beautiful display on the front, input comes in over here, output comes in on this side, and we've got the meter right in the middle telling us how much is left. We've got 45 watt in and out, USB-C right here on the front and another USB-A. In addition, we've got this cool little uh, cable right up at the top that is held down magnetically. And this one gives us a total of 100 watts max in or out. So that makes it really versatile. And then if we just pull on this cable, well, you get about two feet of cable that you can pull out total. Now, if we just want to pull it out a little ways and lock it, we can absolutely do that. And then when we put it back in, just touch it and that magnet will stick again. Now, in addition to that, if we add one of these 12 volt trigger cables, well, now we can charge things like the Kenwood D74. You'll notice we're putting three watts into the battery, but this one is almost full. So it's just about finished topped off or it would probably put a little bit more into this battery. Of course, that's dictated by the device that you're trying to recharge. These uh, HTs will only accept so much power at one time. Additionally, in the box, they give you this little adapter here. This is USB-C on one end and a 7909 adapter on the other. So you can see what that looks like right here. So we can take that and plug this in right here to this. And then with a little bit of adapter magic, I can connect this here and then to this. And now I've got Anderson power poles, which means I can charge this from just about any of my solar panels. All right, that's pretty cool. I've got a 20 watt panel on it, just plugged into the main USB-C right up here on the top. And I'm getting between 15 and 16 watts. Let's try it with a bigger panel. And with a bigger panel, you can see that we're getting about 30 watts. That's not bad at all. It's going to take us about 32 minutes or so to get fully charged back up. Okay, you can pause the video right here if you want to read all of this. I just want to touch on a few key points. We've got a total of 99.2 watt hours. If we look at the outputs for the USB-C, that front output, we can get 5 volts at 3 amps, 9 volts at 3, 12 volts at 3, 15 volts at 3, or 20 volts at 2.25. Now that's on the front USB-C port. If we use the built-in cable, we got 5 volts at 3, 9 volts at 3, 12 volts at 3, 15 volts at 3, and 20 volts at 5 amps. I have been able to use this to power both my MacBook Air and a second monitor that's a travel monitor at the exact same time. And it tells me, I haven't run it completely dead, but it tells me with the uh, remaining hours left that I can run that setup for about six hours. And that's pretty good when the unit is this small. Additionally, while we were at the parade, I used the D74 connected to the A-Free with this trigger cable to run APRS the entire day. Also recharged another HT from completely flat to completely full and still had 65% left in the AFRI at the end of the day. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to leave us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.